yeah today is lecture number 6 of this heat treatment class and uh, today we will continue with that topic that is strengthening mechanism in materials hmm. crystalline materials basically so uh, i think i have covered all those all these things right obstacle strengthening mechanism obstacles to dislocations okay <clears throat> so today uh, we're going to discuss about this uh, yes strengthening mechanism due to this grain size refinement hmm. so basically uh, grain size refinement means we are reducing the size of the grains hmm. we are basically reducing the size of the grains so one of the basic method by which you can reduce the grain size is uh, we take the steel to the austenitizing temperature and from the austenitizing temperature if we do fast rate of cooling fast rate of cooling means like cooling the sample in air or uh, some uh, agitated air or by using some high speed fans we can cool the sample at a fast rate and that will re reduce the grain size hmm. that is one of the technique we can do or we can go for very fast cooling also very very fast cooling that also reduce the grain size and there are also different different techniques we may discuss that in coming lectures how you can reduce the size of the grain there is a technique called uh yeah technique called cyclic heat treatment that is very interesting part actually mm. and we also can refine the grain during solidification itself while we are uh, solidifying our liquid metal into solid mm. by adding some inoculants by adding some nucleating agents right if you add a little amount of nucleating agents so what will happen and we uh, it should be distributed throughout the liquid melt so each nucleating particles or these uh, inoculants will act as a nucleation site huh. and on that nucleation site may uh, uh, nucleation will start and you understand if more is the number of if the rate of nucleation will be more and more the growth rate will be less right so we can get lot of grains right more number of grain means the grain size is less if less number of grain means grain size is bigger hmm. okay we may discuss that again sometimes so these are the one one way is the cyclic heat treatment one way is by adding inoculants or nucleating agent during solidification of liquid metal and uh, there are other techniques like we can go for fast rate of cooling hmm. and uh, oh yeah there is another interesting point if you remember there is another process called recrystallization right that is very interesting we can deform the metal and we can recrystallize it so to get very small small grains we have to prevent the growth but by recrystallization method we can also get finer grain size so these are the many techniques so here uh, we we understand if we reduce the grain size size of the grains then we can increase the strength of the material Hmm. but point, the important point you have to notice here is the grain size should not be below 100 nanometers right it should be above 100 nano nanometers because nanometer grain size if the grain size is below uh, 100 nanometers rather than it increase the strength it decreases the strength again so nano materials uh, do not provide you high strength due to its uh, reduced grain size but if it is in micrometer size and the grain size is small then it is very good hmm. we'll see something huh, with ongoing lectures so here you can see we have a this is this is image of a uh, can anybody tell me what, what this image is showing i'm asking you people what this image is showing hey, am i audible to everybody yes, yes sir yes sir so you, you know nobody is replying what, what this image is showing just look at this image so that polycrystalline material yes this so, is a polycrystalline material why why you are saying polycrystalline material yeah because the different crystal orientation are there in grain boundaries yes many grains are there poly means many crystalline means many crystals 
poly means many crystalline means many crystals many crystals means many grains right here you can see this is one grain Uh, this is another grain. This is another grain. This is another grain. This is another grain. Right? Many, many grains are here. So these are polycrystalline materials. Right? This is a microstructure of a polycrystalline materials. And what other things can you figure it out? We can able to see here. What are these dark straight lines? Some dark straight lines are present. So just steps so or sleep pill. these are slips actually ha huh? these are slip slip planes you can consider these are slip planes ha huh? these are slip planes but if you compare this if you compare this one okay uh, have i covered this part already i don't recall this one have i covered this already have i covered this part no sir okay okay fine Oh, okay, so you can see this. Uh, can you compare this grain with uh, suppose this grain? What is the difference you are looking at? This grain and this grain. Orientation. Orientation. orientation difference. Very good. There is a difference in orientation of the slip planes. Right in the IPM also, I have taught you. Right in a particular grain, the unit cells are oriented in a particular direction. They have a particular crystallographic directions. If you move to the adjacent grain. the orientation of the unit cell is different they have oriented in a different directions so you can understand the slip planes so slip plane here in this grain is different to this grains is different to this grain is different to this grain and is different to this grain that is why a grain boundary is coming this is one of the grain boundary which is not clearly visible this one this is another grain boundary this is another grain boundary this is another grain boundaries right <clears throat> Okay, what what uh, what is this image? Can anyone tell me? Can you figure it out? What is happening here? It's a dislocation pile up. Dislocation pile up. Okay, dislocation pile up. But what is this one? What is this one? And what is this one? Two grains. Two grains. Two crystals. And this is your grain boundary, right? This is crystal one. This is crystal two, and this is your grain boundary, right? And what is this pink color? The dislocations. Dislocations. Which dislocation? Edge edge dislocation. Very good. Edge dislocation. It is a inverted T. Ah, oh, you can see. And this is what is this green color? And what is this green color? What is this green color showing? What is this green color? Just few minutes before, few seconds before, I told you here. The slip plane. Slip plane, obviously. Dislocation is, and we can see dislocations are present on the slip planes here. This and the slip plane. So you can see the slip plane here, and the slip plane here is. What is the difference? orientation difference orientation difference very good so you can see in this grain the orientation of slip plane is like this but in this next adjacent grain the orientation of slip plane is like this so due to difference in orientation of the slip plane in adjacent grains the dislocation is easily gliding on this slip plane in this grain but the moment it will come to the grain boundary here what happens it will get stop it cannot propagate to this next grain why because the slip plane orientation is different in this next grain or this adjacent grain so that is why what i can say what is the conclusion now what is the conclusion now that grain boundary dislocation pile up occurs the, the conclusion is what the grain boundary is an obstacle it is an hindrance the dislocation is propagating easily in one grain but the moment it reaches the grain boundary it is getting stopped the moment or the propagation of dislocation is getting stopped by this grain boundary only so grain boundary acts as an uh, bigger obstacle to the moment of the dislocation so this is clearly visible here right it cannot move to this grain so that's why this is the principle 
Hmm. Okay. So, so what is the principle behind the grain refinement? The principle behind the grain refinement is if we increase more number of grains, so more number of grain boundaries will be there, right? So more number of grains, more number of grain boundaries. More number of grains, you understand, it means finer grains, smaller grain size, right? So more is the grains, finer grain, we have more number of grain boundaries. And more number of grain boundaries means more number of obstacles in front of the dislocations. So dislocation cannot easily move, right? So dislocation motion will be hindered or will be restricted. So that will increase the strength of the material. I think everybody have understood. Or shall I write it? This part is clear. You people have understood. Yes. Sir. You need, yeah, you need to reply sometimes. Otherwise, how I can understand you people are getting my point. Hmm. Okay. So this is one of the way we can increase the strength. So you can see here, the grain size is reducing, the strength is increasing, right? But this can be mathematically expressed as hall patch relationship. Sigma ill strength is equal to sigma naught plus k d to the power minus half. Right. This is a very good relationship between the yield strength with the grain size. This d is nothing but the size of the grain. Hmm. And this sigma ys is the yield strength. So how yield strength is related with the grain size can be given by this hall patch relationship. Hmm. So that can be justified with the help of this plot. This plot is showing yield strength of the material of a polycrystalline material, huh? yield strength of a polycrystalline materials, and this axis is showing you the size of the grain. But from here, the size of the grain is reducing towards right side. Hmm. The grain size is getting reduced in this direction. Here, the yield strength is increasing in this direction. So you can see what is happening. This is a very linear curve and it is going up and up and up. So it, you understand that means more is the finer grain size, the yield strength is increasing. It is okay? You understand? This is for a 70% copper, 30% zinc materials. Hmm. Now, this whole page relationship can be explained further like this. Sigma y is equal to sigma naught plus k d to power minus half. It can be also, I can write like sigma y is equal to sigma naught plus uh, k to, uh, yes. Sir, you have to call a grain size to 100 nanometer row. You have to call a grain size to 100 nanometer row. That is for, uh, okay, fine. That is actually for nano materials. Nano materials means those materials whose grain size is below 100 nanometer. 100 nanometer, below 100 nanometer. It may be 50 nanometer, it may be 90 nanometer, it may be 99 nanometer, it may be 1 nanometer, right? If the grain size is below 100 nanometer, those materials are called nanomaterials. For nanomaterials, the strength will not increase with reduce in the grain size. But for other materials, whose grain size is in micrometer, for example, suppose it is a 200 nanometer grain size. So that means... If you reduce the grain size to 150, for example, the strength will increase. But if you go below 100 nanometer, the grain size will not, the strength will not increase in that conditions. Why it is happening, I will tell you later sometimes. Huh? There are many mechanisms happening. Huh? Grain boundary sliding, uh, grain boundary migration. Huh? Uh, those things will happen hmm, if the size of the grain is very small, very, very small. Now you understood now up to this? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, so this can be explained further. I can write sigma y is called sigma naught plus k divided by root over of d, square root of d. In this way, I can also write. Hmm. And sigma y, I told you this yield strength of the material. Right. Uh, how many of you remember what is the yield strength of the material? What is the definition of yield strength? By looking at looking the stress strength. Uh, 0 0.2 percent offset 0 0.2 percent offset strain okay 
that is actually called upset what is exactly that is called upset yielding upset yielding or upset yield strength upset yield strength yes upset yield strength but my point is how you can define a yield strength i have taught you in the previous class i remember so the if, point yes, after yes, which yes. plastic deformation starts like yes yes very, yes very good very good the point the point don't tell me the point the point it is you can say the stress that yes. is the stress <laughs> axis na the stress at which there is a transition uh, transition from elastic to plastic deformation happens or plastic deformation initiates that stress is called yield stress or yield strength right okay anyways and sigma not here it is constant k is the constant and d is the grain diameter or size of the grain hmm. so you can see again i am drawing sigma y versus 1 by root over of d hmm. which i have shown you here only this one same thing i am drawing here if you draw like this this is a completely linear curve and it is going up and up and up with this is the direction of reduction in the grain size hmm. you can see these are this these points are nothing but the values obtained at a different grain size suppose grain size is this much the value is this much if the grain size is more reduced the strength is more if the grain size is more reduced the strength will be more if the grain size is here the strength is here right but what i i am showing here the slope is nothing but the k this k is nothing but the slope of this yield strength versus 1 by root over d curve hmm. and this this part is the intercept hmm. the intercept is nothing but the sigma not so the question may be like what is sigma not exactly what is this sigma not this sigma not is nothing but the stress for a infinitely large grain or for a single crystal right when the crystal is a single crystal or when the grain size is infinitely large the stress required is nothing but this sigma not hmm. why you understand right because uh, at this point what is the size of the grain can you tell me at this point what is the grain size hmm so infinity infinity, infinity yeah. obviously infinity or you can say it is a single crystal only one single grain is there but if you move in this direction the grain size is reducing decreasing more number of grain will be coming out hmm. so that at so the, at this value at this value of grain size this is your strength so that is the strength of the single crystal or when the grain size is infinite that is the yield strength of the material hmm. and yield strength is increasing further Okay, fine. There is a uh, technique to measure the grain size in a material that is called intercept method, a linear intercept method. In this linear intercept method, we can draw us. We can take a microstructure first. With the help of a microscope, we have to take a microstructure, and we know the magnification. Suppose the magnification is m, and we are taking this microstructure. We are. We can see multiple grains are here. So we have to draw a straight line, linear line, huh? straight linear line. and we have to see we have to know the length of this line ha huh? suppose the length of the line is l capital l and this capital l is not the original length can you people tell me why this is not the original length if i'll draw a line in this microstructure this is not the original length here uh, due to magnification due to magnification very good because we have magnified the image so the how can it be original length oh, very good so so we will draw a straight line and this straight line will intersect many grain boundaries this is one grain boundary is intersect so suppose this straight line has intersected n number of grain boundaries for example hmm. those are intercepts n number of intercepts i have so finally how to find out the size of the grain size of the grain will be d is equal to l by m into n hmm. l is nothing but the length 
and n is the magnification and n is the number of intercepts so this is the one of the easy way to find out the size of the grain hmm. so you have to draw many many lines suppose this is one line you can draw another line you can draw another line many many you draw many many lines and finally you take the average of that that average that is that is why it is called mean intercept size hmm. these are the steps draw a line of a given length then count the number of intersections find the real length real length will be this length l divided by magnification right and finally you find out the size of the grain d is equal to l by m into n right i think you people have understood <clears throat> now you people have understood how by reducing the size of the grain the strength is increasing i have already told you because more is the number of grains more is the number of grain boundaries more is the number of grain boundaries more is the obstacles to the dislocation motion the dislocation cannot move it may get piled up along the grain boundaries right that will increase the strength of the material at the end but uh there is certain conditions where we have to choose coarser grain or we have to choose a single grain or single crystal you do not have to choose finer grain hmm. that depend upon the area of applications where in which area we have to use that particular materials hmm. so suppose for example turbine blade suppose you are making a turbine blade so if you, if you are making a turbine blade so you understand the condition will be what condition will be high temperature and high pressure right the steam will flow or the hot gases will flow and rotate the turbines so the temperature is very high and the pressure is also very high in that atmosphere right so in that condition when the temperature is very high pressure is very high a lot of stresses are acting on the materials right and we understand what happens at high temperature diffusion will happen right and do you remember what happens if diffusion happens in the materials which phenomenon will start if diffusion will happen diffusion phenomenon will happen what will happen to the materials grain coarsening grain coarsening very good grain will get coarser that is that is very good part but here what happens the turbine blades may get elongated it will grow and heat the casting part hmm. turbine will grow in a particular orientations in a particular direction at, and it will heat the casting so it will break right due to this diffusion and and the things may happen that is called creep mechanism creep will start creep is a failure mechanism it basically happens below the yield strength of the materials hmm. due to high temperature huh? due to high temperature diffusion will happen due to diffusion creep will occur hmm. and creep is a failure mechanism right and that will leads to failure of the materials so in that conditions we need coarser grain materials or single grain materials basically we choose single grain material single grain materials means you understand it is a single grain there is no grain boundaries or coarser grain materials means uh, if we have a coarser grain materials so grain boundary will be less or more less less obviously less number of grain boundaries will be available similarly single grain materials means there is no grain boundaries at all right single grain material have do not have any grain boundaries right but coarser grain materials means few grain boundaries will be available and you have to remember grain boundary is a easy diffusion path hmm. grain boundary is a easy diffusion path along that path diffusion will be easier right so that's why tell me Then, then if you have a coarser grain material and if you have a finer grain materials, both are of same materials. So, what will happen? Creep will be easier in which case? Finer grain. Uh, finer grain. grain Fine. Yes. Why finer grain? No. Diffusion is easier. Diffusion will be easy. But yes, more grain boundaries means more area, more more uh, empty spaces or free spaces. Free uh, spaces are there for the diffusion, right? Grain boundary, so diffusion will be more easy. If diffusion will be more easy, the creep will be more, and material will get failed. 
so that is why when we are making a material as a turbine blades or for any very high temperature applications very very high temperature applications we can use a single grain materials or we can use a coarser materials but just opposite if the application area is suppose automotive application we want to make a automotive body car bodies or truck bodies bus bodies or any structural application like uh, your any building materials so in that case we have to use fine grain materials because why can anyone tell me why we have to use fine grain material in that condition the temperature is low uh, temperature is low so so diffusion is less diffusion will not happen diffusion to if diffusion want to happen it happens at a particular temperature from that temperature if you raise the temperature diffusion will be more and more and more but below that temperature diffusion never happens or it is very slow or it will never happens right so that means basically temperature below 500 degree temperature to room temperature diffusion is unimportant diffusion will not occur or diffusion will occur it will be very 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 negligible right so in that condition we can use a fine grain material i think you understand the concept of fine grain material and coarse grain materials now yes sir so that's why i have written also here requirement of a mo modern turbine blade for a modern turbine blades we need that turbine blade will work for 10000 hours right at a temperature of suppose 1000 degree centigrade so what is the solution then how you can design the materials we have to use a single grain materials single grain materials means there is no grain boundary there is no grain boundary means there is no diffusion right there is no diffusion means there will be no creep failure the strength will be very high or otherwise you can eliminate the more number of grain boundaries if you eliminate the more number of grain boundaries means you are moving towards coarser grain right so this is the point here okay strandy mechanism continue actually this is okay so now uh, this is something uh, very interesting part huh? let me discuss so you might have a question why grain boundary is a easy diffusion path hmm obvious there is an obvious question why grain boundary is a easy diffusion path so answer is here just look at this one this is a single crystal hmm. this is a single crystal right if i will push a wedge hmm, if i will push a wedge into this single crystal wedge means a particular portion in which one end is uh, wider another end is sharper like this this is a wedge right this end is wider this end is sharper if i will push and wedge into this single crystal so can you tell me what is happening here if you put in wedge what will happen to the single crystal the hmm? from the top i if i from the top if i will push a wedge huh, like this so what will happen just look at this image it is showing already tilting is happening yes or no yes sir you can see is a tilt boundary this is tilting is happening this this half is getting tilted in this direction this half is tilted in this direction right now you understood a tilt boundary is created here due to pushing off a wedge into a single crystal so now what you are obtaining can you people think of it what is this one and what is this one now two grains very good two grains very nice so you can able to see now the moment i am pushing a wedge into a single crystal tilting is happening one side of the crystal is tilting in this direction and the side is tilting in this direction so you can able to see two grains are forming this is one crystal this is another crystal or this is grain one this is grain two right so now the question is what is this wedge actually so this wedge is nothing but the boundary obviously yes or no 
if you understood now yes sir so this waze is nothing but a boundary so what is exactly boundary if this is a cartoon diagram ha huh? these are the cartoon images if you enlarge this part if you blow up this part Huh. if you go uh, if, if you are using a transmission local microscope you can able to see these things along the grain boundaries right so what are these these are nothing but the dislocations you can see so that means along the grain boundaries you actually you have dislocations right so this is the grain boundary this is the crystal one this is the crystal two and what is this can anyone tell me what is this theta This is the angle of orientation. This theta is nothing but the angle of orientation. This grain, this grain is oriented at an angle of theta with this grain, right? And this d is the spacing between these edge dislocations. So you have to remember more more number of dislocations are present along the grain boundaries. More is the tilting, or more is the theta angle. If more, if you push more number of dislocation, what what happens to the d? d is the distance between the dislocations so what happens to the d decrease very good so so conclusion is what more number of dislocations present along the grain boundaries less is the d and more is the theta angle of orientation between the two grains you people understood now So now the question is: Just look at this image. Hmm. Just look at this image. What is this? What is this part? What is this part? An extra half plane. Extra half plane. Extra half plane of atom. Very good. This is an extra half of plane of atom. What is the name? It is. It is called. Positive edge dislocation. What? What? Sorry, can you repeat? Pos positive edge dislocation. Okay, positive edge. This is an edge dislocation. Okay, fine. So this is an extra half plane of atom. So just look at. This is initially a lattice, and you are inserting an extra half a plane of atom, right? So when you insert an extra half a plane of atom, what happens to the nearby atoms? These atoms and these atoms. It will get compressed force. Uh, it is it is pushing this plane of atom is pushing this plane of atom and this plane of atom right and what about this plane of atoms this one and this one what is happening to this tension force acting yes they are coming they want to try to come closer right why they try to come closer because there is a what missing missing half plane of atom is present here a half plane of atom is missing you understand na no? right mm -hmm. if there is a missing half plane of atom will be there so this plane of atom and this plane of atom will come closer but why they will come closer obviously if there is a missing half plane of atom they will come closer but why because they have to maintain a which distance Inter do you remember Uh, interatomic distance but what is that uh, technical called do you remember the plot between potential energy versus distance between the atoms anybody remember that plot potential energy versus or uh, versus two interatomic distance initially atoms are very far away then they are coming closer they are coming closer what yes, happened to potential energy yes sir yes sir Yes. So finally, the the uh, do you remember the curve? Initial the curve is how how and and at the middle where, where the curve is. Sir, uh, at at the intermed means it first decreases and then comes to a lowest value then increases yes, rapidly. Yes. Yes. So when the potential potential energy will be minimum, what is the distance called? It decreases Decrease. means potential energy is decreasing initially and becoming minimum. That, that is called equilibrium distance. distance. That is that is that is equilibrium distance. Simply, potential energy is minimum. That is the equilibrium distance the atom has to maintain always in a in a crystalline materials, right? So now you under can can you people tell me why they are coming closer? This atomic layer and this atomic layer are coming closer. Why? 
So to maintain the equilibrium distance. Ah, uh, to maintain the equilibrium distance. That's all. Very simple, right? So just look at this portion carefully. Just just look at the crusher. This one and this one. What is the difference you're getting? Suppose I'm talking about this one, this one, and this one. What is the difference you are getting? This portion, huh? This portions and this portions, this portions, this portions, this portions. What is the difference between these portions with other portions? These these portions. Sir, at that point, gap is more. Yes, very good. Somya, you are excellent. So here you can see there is a more gap. There is a more room or more empty space here. Similarly, same thing I have shown here. What is the difference between this portion and this portions? This portions, this portions, this portions, this portions. This is again an extra half plane of atom dislocation, right? So what is here? What are you are getting? Gap is more. Gap is more. Very good. And these, what are these? What are these complete? What are these? Atomic planes. Ah, uh, this is the this is the front face. B behind this, what are what are what will be there? Behind this another front face. column of atom. Ah, uh, another column of atoms will be there. Very good, right? So it is a continuous thing, three dimensional things, right? So now this will be appearing as if you look into three dimension, this will be appearing as what exactly? If you go inside, sir, a cylinder of gas. Yes, it will looks like a tunnel, right? Tunnel with enough room or enough space. Now you people understand why the grain boundary is a easy diffusion path. You people understood now. Hmm. It is okay up to this. So you have to write this one. Huh? How grain boundary is the easy diffusion path, right? Okay. Anyways, let us move. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. Look at this structure. Hmm. No. Now uh, this part is clear. You understood everything about the uh, strengthening mechanism with the help of grain size refinement. Hmm. Now we'll move to some basic concepts huh, so that further strengthening mechanism can be easily understood. Hmm. So just look at this image, and you. So this is what this is a slip plane. These are the edge dislocations. And they are propagating or moving in this direction. This is actually a grain one. This part is grain two, right? And this is grain boundary, for example. Hmm. So just figure it out. What is happening? And if something is happening, what is the consequence of that from this image? Let me see who can figure it out. What is happening here, and due to that happening, what is the consequence of that? Already, it is written over here. Just you have you just look at this image and tell me. So dislocation piled up. Yes, dislocation is getting piled up. Where it is getting piled up? At the grain boundary. At the grain boundary. At the grain boundary, as I told just before, grain boundaries are the obstacles to the motion of the dislocation. Why? Why they are obstacles? Why they are obstacles? So next the grain orientation changes. Ah, in the next grain orientation of the slip plane will be different, right? Very good. So now, as uh, Panda told, uh, yeah, right, someone, uh, sorry, who told? Anyways, some told that the grain, the dislocations are uh, gliding on this slip plane and getting piled up over here, right? So if the dislocation will get piled up, what is the consequence? It is already written over here. Can you figure it out? Due due to pile up of so, dislocation, yes. Back stress. 
yes very good back stresses back stresses uh, what exactly it means back stresses it is already shown in the figure can you people understand what back stresses means okay anything else you are getting from this figure one consequence of the pile up is back stresses will be acting see back stresses means a backward stress will be acting on the dislocation present in the queue right this is the kind of queue dislocation are present in a queue in a line so on these dislocations behind dislocations right some back stresses will be acting this dislocation will give a back stress on this one this dislocation will give a back stresses on this one this dislocation will give a back stresses this one like this back stresses will be acting on the dislocations right anybody else you can figure it out due to pile up it is already written just look at the image carefully stress concentration build up stress yes it is clearly visible stress concentration is building up where where it is building up and the grain bond along at the grain boundaries as well as on the leading dislocation the dislocation which is leading right this dislocations and along the grain boundaries right so so what i mean to say you have to write you have to draw this image and you have to write what is happening dislocations are moving on the slip planes and they are coming across a grain boundaries so they get piled up huh? why they get piled up already you understand you should write it down so due to pile up what is the consequence back stresses will be acting on the dislocation present in the queue right and on the leading dislocation and on the grain boundaries a stress concentration will generate or build up so this is the consequence right let me show you a real image this is a transmission electron micrograph hmm. because you understand we can see dislocation under a transmission electron microscope because they have high resolution power high resolution hmm. so you can see what are these these are again dislocations moving or gliding in this plane and they suppose this is a grain boundary they get piled up here hmm. along the grain boundaries so now okay here all, everything is written ha huh? dislocation gliding in a slip plane already everything is written consequence is already written already i told you now question is how dislocation overcome pile up when they are stuck in a queue i think this topic has been covered in uh, your dvm subject if i am not wrong you you have you 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 we are having a subject called dvm i think deformation behavior yes, deformation of behavior yes, of that these things might be covered right yes sir absolutely these are uh, these are the contents of your ip uh, sorry dbm subject i if i recall anyways so the question is how dislocation overcome pile up when they stuck in a queue so dislocation are uh, in a queue right now right so now how this pile up will overcome can anybody uh, remember okay can can anybody remember how dislocations move in a material what are the different way they move this has been covered in your uh, i think in your ipm subject also and dinesh sir might have told you uh, obviously definitely he might have told you and i have told you i, I remember how dislocation moves how dislocation propagates in a material this uh, acha what is happening to the dislocation motion this motion is called what gliding glide very good dislocation is gliding suppose you are standing in your room you are just standing in your room and you are sliding your uh, uh, foot one by one so that is a moment of dislocation only you are gliding on your floor right your floor is the slip plane and you are gliding you are as you are as dislocation for example but similarly how you can move climb climb yes you remember let me remember dislocation climbs so dislocation climbs so dislocation can climb up or it can climb down right so this is one of the okay what i i am saying here 
where it was okay so how dislocation overcome pile up the answer is dislocation can overcome pile up if they climbs either they climb up they can climb down so do you, anybody remember how climbing happens what is the necessary conditions for cl dislocation climb addition of atoms or vacancies yes yeah. addition of atoms or vacancies so that happens due to only motion of atoms or motion of vacancies and uh, that happens in which condition what should be the condition favorable condition when the temperature will be what when the temperature will be when the temperature will be high obviously yes or no how vacancy are generated in a material do anybody remember how vacancies are generated in a material how you can generate vacancy in a material just by taking the material to a very high temperature automatically lattice vibration will be happen atoms will be coming out from their lattice point and more number of vacancy will generate right so condition favorable is the when there will be lot of vacancy in the materials how lot of vacancy will generate if the temperature of the material will be very high right and they will start and vacancy movement will be happening means atomic movement will be there obviously right so suppose you understand suppose i have a slip plane favorable slip plane on this plane on here over here right so i have another slip plane which is a favorable slip plane presenting over here so what happens the dislocation can climb to this plane this dislocation may climb to this plane only this this dislocation this dislocation is climbing up for example so what will happen if they will climb up so what will happen now suppose this look dislocation is moving up to this plane so now now what will happen the stresses are acting the stresses are acting are more and more so what will happen to the dislocation the moment the dislocation will climb up here up to here suppose there is another slip plane here so what will happen to the dislocation again it can glide very good it will again start to glide why why it will glide why it will glide another slip plane yes now obviously another favorable slip plane is here why it will glide again my question is why because there is no barrier now yes or no ha uh, yes sir because there is no barrier now this is the barrier the dislocation will glide easily but the movement again it will reach here it will stop now you people are getting my point how the pile up is overcome yes yes very good you should write uh, in your notebook huh so this is the way so similarly if another slip plane is favorable slip plane is here for example the dislocation can move here easily and again it will glide in this plane because there is no obstacles right so this is the solution to this and uh, you do you, if you remember how dislocation climb up and how dislocation climb down that is very good if you if a uh, vacancy will come here so dislocation will climb up right if a atom will come over here then dislocation is climb down right yes sir okay very good you remember that uh next one is okay next question how uh, so this is this is one of the way the back stresses also can be removed if the dislocation will climb up some back stresses will be get removed on that dislocation obviously huh. so now the question is how stress build up in pile up is relieved huh. the second consequence you understand stress concentration will build up on the leading dislocation or along the grain boundaries so how this can be relieved or can be reduced can anybody think of it something happens either along the grain boundaries or something happens in this second grain or adjacent grain can anyone think can can you people think of it how this stress concentration can be relieved i i will give you hint one hint is something either happen at, uh, at the grain boundaries why why uh, because this is related to this one just think of it what happens when this happens 
से जो ओरिएंटेशन टा सेम जो दिस पर मतलब सेकंड ग्रेड ने भी सेम ओरिएंटेशन रही हो नो 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 क्रैक क्रैक इफ क्रैक वेरी गुड इफ ओरिएंटेशन विल रिमेन सेम देन हाउ दिस इज अ ग्रेन बाउंड्री लेट मी कम यस टेल मी इफ ओरिएंटेशन विल बी रिमेनिंग सेम देन इट इज नॉट अ ग्रेन बाउंड्री ना ग्रेन बाउंड्री मींस अलोंग दैट बाउंड्रीज द ओरिएंटेशन चेंजेस राइट सो हाउ दिस इज अ ग्रेन बाउंड्री देन सो द पांडा इज राइट या व्हाट हैपेंस the crack will nucleate along the grain boundaries and it will propagate throughout the grain boundaries right it will lead to failure of the materials right or if the material is ductile one so the crack will not easily propagate obviously so something will happen in the adjacent grain what may happens nucleation of a dislocation will happen in the adjacent grain right now you people understood and there is a nucleation of dislocation will occur here in the next grain and if a dislocation will nucleate what will happen then again what will happen to the dislocation that is slip yes it will easily move there is no obstacles the the dislocation will move due to applied load on the materials right so these are the two solutions or two uh, phenomena may happen right so to relieve this stress concentration build up either the material will crack or a new dislocation will initiate in the next grain or grain 2 and it will start gliding in that plane right so these are the answers okay so you people have understood up to this now just look at this figure same figure you understand dislocations are gliding in this direction and they are getting piled up over here along a obstacle this obstacles may be a grain boundary or it may be a hard particles it may be a dispersoid particle or it may be a second phase any precipitate hmm. and you can see the back stresses large back stresses are acting on the dislocation hmm. now just look at this image and look at this image can you people figure it out what is happening here just carefully look this uh, let me tell you this this line is nothing but a inverted t and this line is also an inverted t and this is for example a slip plane hmm can you figure it out what is happening here inverted t means it means you understand hmm this so an inverted positive inverted positive dislocations what 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 positive dislocations Okay, positive. Okay, positive. That means you are saying this is one positive dislocation. This is another positive dislocation. So yes. what is happening here? So they are repelling each other. They are repelling each other. Why they are repelling each other? So positive, like, like that, this repel that, that is. The yes. Yes. You people like have. Like you might have heard this one. Can you please mute yourself right now? Yes. So you people have understood in your uh, DBM subject that like dislocations always repel each other. So now, can you people tell me why they uh, repel each other? Why like dislocation repels each other? The answer is over here only, in front of you. If you carefully look at the figure, you can figure it out. Or otherwise, you might have heard from the answer at least. Why like dislocation repels? What is back that? Back stress. Back stress. Why? Okay, fine. Why back stress? If I'll ask, why back stress? they are on the same plane like both of them are above the slip plane ha huh, so why why back stress will be there that is the question actually back stress means back repelling means actually back stress means back repelling stress means repel. you can see sure. the gap between the, gap the between dislocations the right they are more and more because there is a back stress acting because of pile up oh god because of pile up there is do you people see any pile up here Do you see any obstacles here? Just look at the figure, please. Carefully look at the figure. You will get the answer. Okay, let me give you a hint. This is a field. This is a field. This is a field. This is a field. And what kind of field you remember? If you recall your uh, IPM class, introduction to physical materials. Sir, above that line, both are compressive fields. Very and, good. Uh, yes. Both are tension. very good very good so you remember that means whenever there is an dislocation there is a strain field around it or there is a stress field around it 
right around a dislocation there will be a stress field or strain field i have shown you do you people forget this one what i have shown you here what i have shown you here or what i have shown you here now you now you recall this one and you recall this one so what kind of strain field will be here and what kind of strain field will be here this strain field or this stress field will be what kind of compressive compressive obviously why compressive because this is extra plane extra thing is coming into this one so it will push these atoms and it will push this atom so compression will be there so compressive field will be here so similarly what kind of field will be here in the missing half plane of atom hmm what kind of field tensile tensile field or tension field because th there is a missing plane of atom so this layer of atom and this plane of atom will come closer there is a tension between them right so now you people understood very good so now you understand same field you have to remember same field always repels here you have compression field and compression compression field at the top so they will repel here also the uh, tension field and tension field same field they will repel same fields always repel opposite fields always attracts if you go into the depth why because same field means they have same nature right they have same nature they don't want suppose compression field and compression field will come closer so there will be more compression so do you think it is a stable condition if there will be more compression do you think it is a stable condition if more compression will be there no sir no never similarly if in the bottom part they will come closer so do you think more uh, tension will be a favorable condition or stable condition in a lattice no no right so that's why same fields always repels so that is why same sign dislocation repels now you people understood up to this yes or no if you have any doubt you can ask me right here otherwise you may have a lot of pile of of doubts and the back stresses cannot be uh, relieved at the end okay fine so uh, now we just look at this one hmm. this is a inverted t and this is a t so can you figure it out what is happening here पॉजिटिव नेगेटिव कैंसिल हो जीवा डिसलोकेशन एनिलेशन हो गला पर सेटा परफेक्ट क्रिस्टल हो जीवा ओके देयर अ परफेक्ट क्रिस्टल हो जीवा ओके वेरी गुड वेरी नाइस सो यू शुड सी दैट दिस इज एन इनवर्टेड टी दिस इज अ टी सो दिस इज ऑपोजिट डिसलोकेशंस द साइन ऑफ डिसलोकेशन एंड दिस डिसलोकेशन इज ऑपोजिट सो दे आर अट्रैक्टिंग ईच अदर व्हाई दे आर अट्रैक्टिंग ईच अदर अगेन कैन यू टेल मी व्हाई दे आर अट्रैक्टिंग ईच अदर ड्यू टू व्हाट ऑपोजिट फील्ड ऑपोजिट फील्ड यस so top of this dislocation is compression field and top of this dislocation is tension field so compression field tension field will attract each other because they want to nullify each other right so strain can be what reduced or minimized so that it can uh, attain a stable condition right minimization of strain will be there right similarly bottom of this dislocation is having a tension field and bottom of this one is having a tension field sorry bottom of this one will be having tension field and bottom of this one will be having a compression field so opposite field will attract so finally you can see this dislocation is attracting towards this dislocation this dislocation is attracting towards this dislocation finally what is happening this process is called annihilation annihilation means this is a technical term in the metallurgy we use annihilation annihilation means disappearance of the dislocation so annihilation of dislocation means disappearance of dislocation or annihilation of defect means Uh, disappearance of the defect so now this is a what can you people tell me what is this complete structure an atomic plane ha uh, this is a complete plane of atom right initially it is a half plane of atom and this is a half plane of atom now it is a complete plane of atom now you understand if the, you can see this figure this is a extra half plane of atom if i will place a extra half a plane of atom in the bottom so what will happen to this if i will put an extra half plane of atom here so what will happen to the 
system. Tell me quickly, what will happen to the system now? It will form an assembly. Sorry. It's a complete plane. Yes, it will become a complete plane. So once it will become a complete plane, now what will happen to the lattice? Lattice. What will happen to the lattice? Perfect lattice. Ah, uh, it will become a perfect lattice. Very good. Or you can say strain in the lattice will be minimized or null. It will become null, zero. You people have understood now. You people have understood right now what is happening yes, here. Sir. Suppose uh, instead of putting an extra half plane of atom here, if I will put an extra half a plane atom here, beside this extra half plane of atom, what will happen to the lattice? More stress. More Very strain good. will be generated. Very good. More strain in the lattice will be coming out. Why? Because they will repel each other. You understand? Be due to same field, they will repel each other. So more strain, will, uh, strain, strain will be coming into the. Lattice that is not favorable condition, right? Anyways, so up to this, you people have understood very well. Okay, now we'll move to uh, we'll complete this. We'll move to solid solution strengthening. All the points I have explained that will be beneficial for this topic. Huh? That is the motivation to this topic. Solid solution strengthening. You people have remember what is a solid solution? It is a solution in solid state. That means suppose I have a pure iron. And I am adding carbon into it, so it become a interstitial solid solution, right? Suppose I have a pure iron and I am adding nickel into it, so it will become a which kind of solid solution? Now, it will become a substitution. Substitutional solid solution, very good. So we can have interstitial solid solution. We can we can have substitutional solid solution. Uh, how can you differentiate uh, these two solutions? On what basis? Size on the basis of mainly size. If the size of the solute atom is very very small, it can easily go into the interstitial voids. So it will form a interstitial solid solution like ferrite, austenite, right? Similarly, if uh, if the size of the atom solute atom is comparable to the uh, solvent atoms, right? Or it is somewhat smaller or somewhat bigger. Comparable size, then it will become a substitutional solid solution, right? So now, how making so solid solutions will increase the strength? That is the question now. So already point uh, principle is written over here. Principle behind the strengthening in strengthening is strain field or stress field around the solute atoms in the parent lattice, and interaction with strain uh, strain field or stress field around the dislocations. So can you conclude this one? How the strengthening is happening? The strengthening is happening due to interaction, right? What what is the interaction? Point defect. Point defect means what? Point defect. I am talking about the solute atoms. They will interact with line defect. Line defect means dislocations, right? So how they will interact? The point defect around the point defect. We have some certain strain fields or stress fields, and around the dislocations, we have certain strain field or stress fields. So these stress fields or strain field will interact with each other, right? So I have already written over here. You can see vacancy is a point defect. Substitutional atom is a point defect. Interstitial atom is a point defect, right? So point defects will start interacting with the dislocations, right? So what kind of field field we have already? It is written over here. Can you people quickly tell me if you have a vacancy in a lattice, which kind of strain field or stress field will be there? Around the vacancy, uh, inward strain. Ha, huh, inward strain. But what tensile. is the nature? Tensile. How you can justify tensile? What is the justification? Uh, hmm. The atom is missing, so hmm. the equilibrium hmm. distance very is good, very somehow good. reduced. Very good. Very good. So that means if atom is missing or at that point, so nearby atoms will be coming closer to one another, right? They have to maintain an equilibrium distance. They will come closer. Once they will come closer, so it, that will give rise to tensile stress or tensile strain around that. Very good. So if you have a interstitial atoms, very small interstitial atom, very small, that means the size of the interstitial atom is smaller than the void size. So what kind of field will be there around the interstitial atom? Compressive. Compressive. Very good. 
very good compressive why compressive so uh, small to maintain bit. that uh, equilibrium distance they have to uh, repel something they have to they have to they, they will repel or they will come closer repel do you think it is repel i am talking uh, the answer we are talking sir, about is right but justification is not right sir there is uh, one more one extra atom is present my question was if you have a very small interstitial atom and the size of the interstitial size is bigger so which kind of field will be there around the interstitial atom tensile field or compression field tensile field obviously tensile field so how is the justification to that yeah how tensile because the nearby uh, substitutional atom will come closer to one another no because the size of the interstitial atom is small so obviously the atom present in the adjacent points will come closer so it will give rise to again tension field you understood now again hello am i audible or yes sir suppose just opposite if you have a bigger interstitial atom like carbon atom carbon atom going into the octahedral void of the uh, iron now it is a bigger atom bigger size interstitial atom so what will happen to the surrounding positions or what kind of field will be there what kind of field will be there compressive compressive field very good why compressive field what is the justification because the interstitial atom size is bigger than the part size that's bigger. why it pushes yes. out uh, bigger uh, yes very good if it will, that means that means it will push the carbon atom will push the nearby adjacent iron atom so if it is pushing so compression field will be there you people understood now so similarly if you have a bigger uh, substitutional atom so what will happen what kind of field will be there bigger substitutional atom just imagine a bigger substitutional atom you are adding into a lattice uh, so what compression. kind of field will be there hmm? compressive 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 field compression very good because it is bigger it will push the nearby atoms very good so if a smaller atom will be there a smaller substitutional atom will be there what kind of field what kind of field will be there around a smaller substitutional atom tensile tensile very good tensile which can be explained over here so already i have explained this one ha huh? line defect line defect means you understand this is dislocation basically edge dislocation hmm. already you understood this one i have explained it just before hmm it is okay this slide is okay i, I think yes sir okay fine i'll move to the next slide just look at the images now you understand this one this figure you people understood this figure this figure is showing extra half plane of atom sitting over here so this green portion is the compression field and this yellow portion is the tensile field or tension field right already i have explained this one so what is this is showing? can anybody tell, tell me what is this is showing here what is this image showing vacancy vacancy and around the vacancy what is happening a uh, tensile field is generating yes very good around the vacancy tension field is there you can call tension uh, stress field or strain field anything huh. very good so next can you figure it out what is happening here which kind of atom is this and what is happening here interstitial atom very good interstitial atom because it is sitting in the interstitial position so around the interstitial atom which kind of field is here compressive compressive, compressive field compressive field very good why it is compressive field it is a what what i i should write here bigger or smaller 
big bigger very good bigger around the bigger industrial atom compressive compression field huh compression field or compressive field very good so what about this what is this and what is happening here tensile tensile around the smaller substitutional this is a smaller switch atom substitutional very smaller why why substitutional just look at the figure why substitutional how you can just uh, in the regular lattice point. very good it is it is occupying the regular site or lattice points or lattice sites hmm so smaller substitutional atom oh sorry around huh? around around smaller substitutional atom we have which kind of field tension field tension tension very good tension done okay last one what is this hmm bigger so bigger disc interstitial atom bigger substitutional yes bigger substitutional who told uh, um interstitial how it is looking like an interstitial uh, sorry sir just the atom should be present in a uniform way na so the atom is missing over here so substitutional atom is coming over here that's why bigger substitutional atom okay uh what i should write around okay around around this which kind of field compressive compressive sir if we consider at the substitutional point there will be a tensile field sorry, uh, sorry can you repeat can you repeat at you are, the substitutional you are point figure? yes sir okay fine huh? okay, so fine. around that uh, substitutional point there is compressive strain compressive mm -hmm. field but mm -hmm. at the at the substitutional point there will be a tensile field if this will be missing listen it carefully if there is no atom here for example this is the condition if no atom will be here so obviously this is a tension field but you are putting an atom right now no so this atom no, will sir. exist yes sir so the atom is pushing the side uh, atoms yes this atom this atom this atom this atom yes sir so so pushing is is kind of uh, like tensile thing no no this is no, not tensile at, thing. at that point at that point no 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 you are not getting not getting you are not getting my suppose consider this one for example something is missing over here so what happens this atom this atom this atom this atom has to maintain a equilibrium distance because the atom so is the missing, atom is missing. Yes, so they will come so they... closer so around this i am talking about around this completely they are in tension suppose you do one thing you uh, tie a uh, rubber band right to uh, some clip and you pull it so what is happening tension or compression tension tension right? so similarly you do one thing in one wall you uh, attach a uh, clip and in another wall just adjacent wall you attach a clip and in one uh, wall you tie a rubber in another wall you tie a rubber and you try to pull it towards you so what, what is happening tension or compression it's a compression this is compression compression how you are talking how about compression compression, compression. so i am pulling them towards me ha huh. so the huh. force is them yes, sir. This, yes sir this. the huh. force huh. are coming towards me yes yes the forces are trying to compress me no 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> okay anyways suppose you push your wall by your hand now you suppose your two walls are very close to one another right and you are pushing the wall by your left hand and your right hand you are pushing the another wall what you are doing on the wall to the structure to the entire structure what you are doing you are doing tension yes sir is it so is it so so for me you, i am talking is... about the lattice consider the whole lattice consider the whole lattice or suppose consider this suppose consider this layer of atom and this layer of atom and you stand over here you push this one and you push this one so you are applying compressive load to the lattice or tensile load to the lattice now so tensile around this around this region 
Yes, sir. Tensile load. Tensile load. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes, sir. <laughs> Around this portion, I am talking about. Just this portion. I am not talking about the whole body. Otherwise, you and I understand. You are saying I I will apply a load here and I will apply a load. It is it is you are applying a tensile load to the material, the whole materials. But I am talking yes, about sir. this reason, specific reason. This specific sir, reason. If, yes, sir. If I am standing there and pushing the front atom. Uh, <laughs> so I am giving a tensile force according to me, but the that uh, second yes, atom yes. which next is next to that atom will experience a compressive exactly. force. Exactly. Now you now, now you understand my point. I am I am talking about what is happening to the lattice. I am bothering about the lattice near the. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, you, you are. Yes, sir. All all. Yes, sir. All this answer which you have uh, you wrote just now all were uh, with reference to that. Uh, Lattice. Uh, lattice. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Exactly. But I was saying that if we consider the atom, the substitutional atom, so okay. according okay. to that substitution. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That is fine. That is Everything fine. we are bothering about, about is what is happening to the lattice. What is happening to the strain energy of the lattice? It is increasing or decreasing, right? Yes, sir. That is the point. It may increase due to uh, the compression. It may increase due to tension. Yes, sir. Both thing. If that if tension is acting, lattice energy is also increasing. If compression is also there in the lattice, it is also increasing. Right? But lattice always want to minimize it anyhow. That is the main criteria. It wants to minimize its energy, lattice energy or strain energy. Right? So strain can be generated either uh, in tension or it can be generated either in compression. And that is generated generated due to this addition of defects. You understand my point now? Yes, sir. If defect will be there, the strain will be there in the lattice. Okay, uh, I think up to this part you have understood. Let me finish it. Uh, Nilkant sir will not take the class today. I will take five minutes more. Now you just read read these important lines I have written over here. Interaction between point defects and dislocation. So how dislocation and point defects, as I told, they will interact. So why dislocation interact with the point defect? What is the answer? I have written over here. Just look at this one. Now you got the answer. Why dislocation will interact with the point defect? What is written over here? To minimize the strain energy. You understand because this around the dislocation we have compression field and tension field, and dislocation wants it to minimize it. So if it minimizes the compression field and tension field, the strain energy will be minimized. I think it is clear up to this. So how the yes. minimization will occur? Minimization will occur. It will if it will interact with the defects. Either it will interact with the interstitial atom, it may interact with the substitutional atom, or it may interact with the vacancies. So now the what is the what is the consequence? Question is what is the consequence of interaction between them? Between them means between dislocation and point defect. So what is the consequence? What is written over here? What is the consequence? Can you people tell me what is the consequence? Already it is written over here. You have to justify it. That's all. So, due to interaction, what will happen? The point defects will start accumulating. Yes or no? They will start accumulating around the dislocations, around the strain field of dislocation. You might be confused, maybe. Hmm. So, can you people tell me now? Suppose this is a dislocation sitting over here now. Listen it carefully. Suppose th there is a dislocation sitting over here. So if you have a vacancy, vacancy will start accumulating in which region? Tell me quickly. Let me see who can answer. Pass. So extra half plane ray. Extra half plane ray. Mean in green or in yellow region or where? Green. 
Yes. Why green? Why green? To minimize the strain in to strain field. Yes, very good. Because why? Yeah, to minimize. How it will be minimized? How it will be minimized? So vacancy have tensile strain field around it, and very good. Vacancy have a tensile tensile field around it, and this this green portion is also having a compression field around it, right? So they will get cancel out. Yes or no? Yes. You understood now? Yes, sir. Yes. So the vacancy may come and it will may sit over here, this one. So it will get climbed up, but the strain field will be minimized because around the vacancy tension field is there and around this region it is compression field. Compression field tension field will cancel out. So similarly, if you have a interstitial atom, for example, a, a carbon atom sitting in the iron lattice, so where it will move? Where carbon atom will move? And where it will get accumulate? Try to accumulate. A carbon atom sitting in an iron lattice, and a dislocation is present in the lattice of iron. Now, where carbon atom will go and sit or get accumulate? In that yellow region. In that yellow region. Very good. Why yellow region? Why carbon atom will come and sit in? Sit so over here. The yellow region has a tensile uh, field. Yes, 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 a tensile field. Yes, and yes. if carbon mm -hmm. comes there due to the interstitial atom, it will create a compressive field. Yes, very yes. good. So finally, they will cancel out. You understand? Around the carbon atom, we have a compression field because carbon atom is bigger compared to comparison to that of the void size. So it will have a compression field. And here we have a tension field. So carbon atom will co come and sit in the dislocation core. Do you remember this is called dislocation core? Somebody remember? So this will accumulate over here. Anyways, you understood all these points. So finally, what is the result of this? You, it is written over. Just read it here. What is written over here? Due to accumulation of the point defect, the strain energy of the dislocation become minimized. So if the dislocation has to move again, it has to carry this diff point defect with it due to which a drag force will act on the dislocation and if the stress applied on the material is very high dislocation get detached from this point defect and it will move and it will move easily so can you uh, finally conclude anybody can want to conclude this one let me see who can conclude this one this is the end of the topic today's topic so how that means the question is what is the main mechanism of strengthening of a steel by solid solution strengthening or by point defects if there is a question how you can explain it yes i want i, I want answer from you yourself hmm. just tell me how you can conclude this one? How you can increase the strength of a material by adding solute atoms? A lot of things I have explained. Can you people tell me quickly? Yeah, you can try. If you might be wrong, that is okay. No problem. So dislocation claim. Dislocation claim. If dislocation, dislocation claim will happen, then dislocation will easily move. And dislocation claim will happen if there is a pileup. But here we are not talking about any pileup. Uh, sir, we have to maintain an optimum strain field around atoms. Okay, nobody's. Uh, okay, anybody else want to speak? How addition of solute atom? Suppose I am adding carbon. So, okay, let let me give an example. Suppose I am carbon atom. Iron. 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 How the strength will increase? Just correlate those things. I have I have told the strength fields, and the last statement I have written. Just read read out the last statement. Everything is there. Sir, on. Uh, 
sir that uh, solid solid that carbon atom is added uh, mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. that will uh, create an tensile field and uh, those tensile fields, or compression field compressive compressive field ah, compression and field those, very good mm -hmm. the and those fields will get accumulated around the dislocations where mm -hmm. there is com there is tensile field and that very way good, it very will good. Yes. it will mm -hmm. try to minimize the en energy Strain energy there. of the dislocation very good Yes. So then, um, again, when we try to deform the material, then if the dislocation wants to move, it has to overcome that uh, energy minimization. That energy uh, energy minimization. Better you should tell this one. Just read the statement. Due to which uh, this one. So if the dislocation has to move again, it has to carry this point defect with it. Due to which, what is happening? Uh, a drag force will act on the dislocation. Exactly. Exactly. Very good. So, if a drag force will be there and dislocation want to move, so what will happen? Stress required for the movement will be more, obviously. Yes, sir. So that is the reason. You understand now? Everybody have understood what Panda told? Yes or no? Okay, I think you people have understood very well. Okay, if you have any doubt, you can call me up or you can text me. Uh, I am ending this lecture. You can people you people can leave right now.